everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech, and over the past few weeks, I haven't covered any Apple app updates, so I thought we'd go over all of the major updates that have come to iPhone and iPad over the past few weeks. And the first thing is Twitter. Twitter is now allowing you to edit tweets for some people. It says if you see an edited tweet, it's because we're testing the edit button. This is happening, and you'll be okay. So this is finally something they're testing out. Hopefully it comes to everyone and isn't part of just Twitter Blue. Also, Circles is now live, so maybe you want to tweet something and you can select, you can send to super followers if you have that, or tweet within your circle, which is up to 150 different accounts or people that you actually want to talk to directly. So you can select that, edit your circle, change it up, and be able to tweet directly to those people if you don't want everyone to see it. The other day, Apple launched a new app called Platoon. Now this is invite only right now, and it's for artists to actually promote their information, their different music and more, and then see statistics and more information about it. So this is available now. If you had the previous Platoon app, it was something Apple acquired, and now they're pushing out their own app for that. Apple recently updated the developer app as well. The developer app doesn't gain a whole lot this time around, but you are able to see the services you're subscribed to in the new account view. So if you go into accounts and then you sign in, you'll be able to see anything that you're subscribed to within the developer app. They also fixed some bugs and added variants, various enhancements according to Apple. If we go into the YouTube app, YouTube has been running experimental features. We did this with the picture in picture feature. And now they did this with pinch to zoom that's now over and has been removed for most people where you could pinch and zoom into different things. Now there's a new experiment available where you can watch together with Google meet similar to share play. So this is something that's available now until September 29th. So let me know if you use the pinch to zoom and what you thought of that. I thought it was nice if I wanted to zoom in and get more detail, but I found I didn't use it that much, but it was nice to actually have there if you wanted it. And then you could turn it on and off as needed. Instagram is being updated now specifically for users 16 and under, which will now have a more strict filter by default as they try to make their app more and more like TikTok. It will prompt users after that to review their account settings, and then they can adjust who they can reshare it with and also who can message them and also the amount of time they've spent in the app. So that's something that they've updated. If someone is 16 or under, they should see different notifications for that and be able to customize those settings. TikTok is also experimenting with new features. And if we go over to TikTok, they're experimenting with new features that allow you to actually see a different feed view of things that are nearby. So currently you have things that you're following, things that you're actually interested in, and then things that are suggested to you. You should have a nearby feed very soon as well. And of course I have accounts on all of these. I post to them sometimes, usually when updates are out. Facebook Messenger was updated with support for M1 and M2 Max. So if you do use the Facebook messaging app, Messenger will now work natively with those particular devices where they didn't before, before you had to use Rosetta. It really shouldn't make much of a difference, but it is something they've updated. Earlier this year, Apple has made big strides to update macOS malware protection. Around the time of macOS 12.3, Apple apparently quietly introduced a new X-Protect remediator that allows it to check for malware more often often in the background and is sort of a better service overall. There's different layers of defense and it runs all on its own. You don't enable it or anything else. And there was a larger article about this on eclectic light as well. So I'll link that in the description, but this talks all about it. Remediate malware that has ex executed X protect. And you'll see the first layer of defense, the next layer, and then finally another layer. So it explains how it's actually protecting your Mac overall. And they did this without us even knowing. Now, if you use bootcamp on windows, that has gotten another update where it improves your touchpad responsiveness as well. So there's new touchpad drivers and bug fixes that have been implemented in that version. It's 6.1.19. Apple also updated its Safari technology preview to version 152 with bug fixes and improvements. They haven't said a whole lot, but they often update these. You can download the Safari technology preview. If you're on Mac OS Ventura or Mac OS Monterey, you can see the release notes. It released on August 24th as version 152. So if you want to check that out, you can try it out, but of course there will be bugs and you'll want to report that feedback.
This past week, Apple sent out emails about a new education community club. So if you're a teacher, you can sign up to be an Apple teacher. And then we can take a look at the professional hub. It says your space to learn, connect, and be inspired. So if you're a teacher, you can sign up for this. It says start your Apple teacher, teacher journey. And they've had some of these for now, but now there's that new community hub where you can get even more resources. So that's available now. Now, not necessarily an app, but a website that's a little bit fun. I thought you might enjoy is neil.fun. So you can design your own iPhone, which would be ideal to you. So you can add everything from a power button to a silencer. You can even add a click wheel if you want to just drag it on there, place it wherever you want, and you can add it to what you'd like. So we can spin it around. Maybe on the back, we could put googly eyes. You can just drag those on there and then put those. If you wanted an HDMI port on the bottom, you can drag that to the bottom of the device. So you can just try this out, delete the different items and start over again. So it's a nice little way to sort of design an iPhone the way you think it should be designed with different cameras and more. So everything from the current camera to the non pro camera, you could put it in the bottom, put a pro camera at the top and just arrange it however you'd like and see what it would look like. So I'll link that in the description if you'd like to try it out. Now, if you've been wanting to try out different networks and you live in the United States or elsewhere where T-Mobile is available, the T-Mobile app will now allow you to try their network for up to three months free. This uses eSIM technology and then you can try it out and see if it works for you. I know where I live, it's actually one of the better networks. It has better coverage than many other networks right now and has great speeds. Now it may be that way for you where you live. I know years ago it was very different. Now it's been much improved, at least around the area I live in. So it's worth trying out if you were thinking of switching and you can do that directly from their app and it just uses an eSIM. So if you want to try it out, it's available now. Apple podcast subscriptions are up. So if you're someone that gets the podcast app and then you subscribe to maybe a different show as they've added subscriptions in the past year or so, they're up 300% since June 2021. I know my wife actually listens to podcasts all the time now and didn't last year, and she doesn't even subscribe to any paid ones. She just listens to different podcasts. So that's something that's seemingly getting a lot more use and a lot more listening to. So maybe I'll think about doing one of those in the future myself. Now, DuckDuckGo has launched a new email protection beta. So similar to what we have with Hide My Email, DuckDuckGo now has that protection beta going on. So you'll see here on their website, DuckDuckGo email protection beta now open to all. Before it was sort of invite only, or you had to sign up, you can get your own at duck.com email address, and then it will sort of fix things that are tracking your email and more, and then you'll be able to be secure from that. Now you do have to forward your email through their service in order for this to work. So that is one thing you may want to consider. However, if you have hide my email on iOS 16, it's sort of doing the same thing. Now, Snapchat finally gets a feature that I know a lot of people have wanted. I don't use this a ton, but it is on my phone. So if we go in, you'll see, we now have an option to record with both cameras. We have a dual camera option. So you have the front and rear camera at the same time to record. Cord. You can go horizontal with it, put it in the bottom window. It's recording from the rear camera and the front camera at the same time, or just myself. So you can use this within Snapchat. Now it's a little handy feature. If you want to record yourself talking about something in the distance. Now, if you're someone outside of the United States or even in the United States that uses WhatsApp all the time, the latest beta version of WhatsApp allows group admins to delete any message now, and they're working on making it possible to silently leave a group as well. So within WhatsApp, if you're in a large group and you want to remove some people, you don't want there anymore. You can now do that within the beta. So that means it will be coming out a little bit later, maybe when they release it in an update to iOS and then Android as well. Now, if you use Plex, Plex is actually sending out emails that they had a data breach asking users to reset passwords due to exposed email addresses and exposed encrypted passwords. So if you're regularly using Plex, maybe you're streaming movies and things like that, make sure that you update your password just to keep everything secure. Now, when Apple introduced iOS 16, they also mentioned a new app called Freeform that lets you collaborate with people on sort of a whiteboard together. Now it looks like this is coming later this year with iOS 16.1 or even later. It should be built into the OS. Of course, we knew it was coming later this year, 
but we still haven't seen any sort of resemblance of it, no code or anything else. So it looks like it may be launching along the time of iOS 16.1 with iPad OS since iPad OS 16 was delayed. And we're going to have that probably in October with the launch of maybe some new iPads and of course, Mac OS Ventura. So this is sort of a whiteboard where we can collaborate in real time with others using it that's secure and everything else. So that's something that we should see fairly soon, but hopefully it will be probably around the October timeframe. Now, of course, iOS 16 should be launching soon in just a couple of weeks at this point, as we have the Apple event, not too far from now on the 7th of September. So on September 7th, you can expect iOS 16 release candidate after that event with most likely a launch of iOS 16 on the 12th of September. That seems to be the most likely thing. It could be a few days later, but typically that's what Apple does. So we should see some major updates there. And for those of you asking me, where are all the apps that support the different features in here, whether that be new widgets or more new live activities on the lock screen. Those are things we're waiting for, but Apple still hasn't had developers update those apps yet. So we should see a bunch of different apps updated fairly soon with all of those updates, probably closer to the launch of iOS 16 RC or iOS 16. Then we'll get all of those features we've been waiting for specifically live activities. I'm waiting for those. So with all of those, we should see a lot of different updates very, very soon. Of course, now that we're close to that Apple event, if we go into Twitter, we have the new hash flag that's available. So tweet hashtag Apple event. You'll see the little Apple with the far out animation or graphic there. And that should be available usually until the day or two after the Apple event. So that's available now. And of course I'll keep you updated with everything we're expecting from iOS 16. We're really expecting some new wallpapers. We haven't seen some of those, some that they've actually talked about in the notes. So hopefully we'll see that very, very soon. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.